Welcome back everyone to episode number 5 of the tutorial series, and today we're going to go over rendering pictures, like making still renders, using the camera in Blender, getting lighting sorted, all that good jazz. Also, I got my window open so y'all might hear some birds chirping like hell throughout this video. Alright, rendering, let's do it. Alright, there's three basic components to any render, and they're actually shown in the default viewport. So there's lighting, like right up here, there's your camera, which is the uh, actual frame of the image, and then there's of course the objects in the scene. So assuming you already have a camera in your viewport, I mean, if you deleted it for some reason, you can just press Shift A, go down to camera, and insert it. But we already got one since we got a fresh Blender viewport. So if you want to see through the view of the camera, you're going to press numpad 0 on your keyboard. So that's going to be like, oh, not not the number zero, but like on that little three by three numpad to the far right of the keyboard, that's where it's going to be. So if you press zero there, then it just takes you right to your camera view like this. And if you want to see what the viewport looks like, like for the rendering, uh, you got to press this button up here, which is rendered view. And this is going to show you the objects with the lighting and everything going on. And of course, to actually render it, you can just press render up here and render image. And since this is a pretty low quality image, it's going to render really fast. But I've seen renders take like <laughs> upwards of three and four hours if you got a lot of lighting and stuff. Also, it kind of depends on the quality of your PC. But uh, yeah, this one, I mean, it's this is the absolute basic render in Blender. This is just what, what your viewport starts with. Obviously, you can change what's in the viewport, duplicate some things, move them around a little bit. And of course, the lighting still affects all those objects. So if you re-render it, it's going to look pretty similar to the first one. And now, if you want to move your camera around, you can actually select it and just use like the move tools in the viewport to move it around. You can rotate it. Uh, I don't think... No, you can't scale it around, but you can move and rotate it. And to get out of the camera view, just hold down the middle mouse button and start panning around. It just gets rid of it by default. But now that you're in this view, you can actually move your camera around even more, rotate it, get any angle you want. But one cool feature that I really like is you can actually move your viewport camera. Like, let's say you wanted your viewport to be like the cameras on uh, on this angle right here, like where I've got my box. You can actually just move your viewport camera there and press Control, Alt, and Numpad 0, and it will just uh, teleport your camera right there. It's super helpful. And of course, you can add any objects you want. Like, I might delete these. Go Shift A, Landscape, move this down, rotate it, scale it way up. Let's see, move you down here, duplicate you, scale this guy up. And now if I just render this, this, I've got mountains. Also shade these smooth, and I'm not sure if I went over it yet, but to add color, uh, it's just going to be this material properties button down here, new material, and then changing the base color like that. I'm going to hold down on my select option right up here, go down to circle select. Uh, let's click on face select as well, just highlight some random faces. And I don't know, let's just make these gray or something. So we can go new material, gray material, and just hit a sign on those faces. That, oh, that looks horrible. Obviously, though, if you put like more effort in, that's how you would color objects, like in the most simple way possible in your viewport. Okay, now let's do lighting real quick. Okay, I'll add in a cube just so uh, you can see like how the lighting is going to react to everything. And also another thing I want to go over real quick is render engines. So if I click on this button right here, you can see render render engine is set to Eevee. Uh, Eevee is more of a basic render engine. Like you can see the the light looks, I guess, really basic, really simple on this cube. The other option is, I mean, workbench is just basically no lighting at all. It's like just the solid view of everything. Never use that. Cycles is going to be really taxing on your computer. This is like the high quality one. You can see I'm already starting to lag. You might even hear my PC fan going crazy in the background. But you can see just from this one, the lighting looks way more realistic than it does in Eevee. The shadows are have more of a gradient to them. So cycles is for like really high quality renders. But anyway, uh, putting that aside, Let's, let's do lighting real quick. So if I have my point light right here, I just got to click on this little light bulb button down here. You can change the color of it. Let's say we want like a red light. So it looks like it's changing the color of the cube, but it's actually not. It's just the light is shining right on top of the cube. So it looks like the cube is orange. Uh, let's go like, I don't know, a pink light. Now you can change the power as well, which is just the brightness of the light. Go even 20,000. You can see it's going to be really, really bright. You can also change the radius to see like how far it goes. Uh, this usually reduces the power. So like to compensate for a really high radius, you have to have more power to get the same brightness as you did before. But yeah, lights are super fun to experiment with. You can turn off shadows and such like that. There's a couple more properties, but really just those three are the main ones you're going to use. And there's also different types of lights. So if I press shift A, go down to lights, we have points, sun, spot, and area. Uh, the point light was what I was just using. That's just like the most basic light you can get. And then of course, we also have the sun 
sun, which just acts as a sun. If I just crank this angle up, uh, turn up the strength, you can see it basically lights the environment from all angles completely evenly. I could put a cube here, rotate it. I don't know, shift A. Let's add something crazy. Yeah, cylinder, uh, scale this guy way up. You can see it's still getting light from basically every single side. And it looks really natural. Like there's a couple shadows here and there. But yeah, the sun is super helpful for just getting like easy lighting that's going to hit every angle and look realistic. All right, get rid of it now. Uh, let's try, let's see what's next. Spotlights. Uh, exactly what it sounds like. And it acts like a spotlight too. You can see the, the actual light itself is up here, but it's going to project this giant like conical radius down on the objects. I can crank up the power to like... 50,000 you can see it goes right through you can rotate it as well to like come from an angle uh, one thing I like to try let's see if I put my camera control alt numpad zero up here then what I like to do is have the point light coming directly from the camera so rotate it so that it's facing like the same angle as the camera on both sides and facing the object as well and now it's, it's kind of cool just having light like coming directly from the camera so for some reason on the spotlight the radius actually changes the base light up there and not the actual spot uh it makes the lighting super weird I haven't experimented a whole lot with radius on this because you really don't need it but uh yeah something to play around with and last we have area light Lights. This one I've barely ever used. Area lights are basically just a, a square of light coming down on your objects. You can change power and color just like the other ones, get some cool RGB looking lights in here. But I don't really use these much. It's mainly just the sun and point lights is enough to make a really good scene. Now of course with rendering it's also important to consider some rendering settings. So the same menu before where we changed uh, the engine from cycles to easy and back and forth. You can also change uh, the sample count and this is essentially uh, how high the quality of your render is going to be. 64 samples is the default. You know, if you go to 128, it's going to be even higher. 256, even higher, so on, so on, so on. Uh, the only drawback is the more samples you have, the longer it's going to take your computer to render the image. You can see the viewport is only 16. So if I go to rendered mode right now, let's give it a light as well. Sun, let's make it green. That looks sick. So right now, like this image in my viewport is being rendered at uh, 16 samples. I can change this to 64. Uh, looks a little bit better. But if I obviously crank this to like 256, eventually it's going to start lagging because this has to update in real time with like me moving around in my viewport. EV is never going to get too laggy because unlike cycles, you know, it's obviously the colors are a lot more simple. The lighting is a lot less detailed. EV is always good for fast renders if you just want a good clean looking picture, nothing like crazy quality and above all a fast render time. If I go to cycles though, this is going to lag like hell. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is rough, man. Back to EV. Uh, another thing you'll notice, uh, lights don't always translate between render engines. Like if you got a sun and EV and you go to cycles, you see that light disappears. So you would just have to go to cycles and add another sun and change the settings back. I don't really know why blenders like that, but it just is. I'm not too familiar with all of these settings because you can create a great render without going through any of these, but there's a ton of different, like very specific lighting settings you can change, volumetrics, the, like the fog in the render, shadows, indirect lighting, such and such. Although there is one right here I want to go over under film if you check transparent oh what is that so with transparent checked if i render this image you'll notice the background doesn't render it's only the objects and i like if i save this to my pc uh this whole back area would just be completely transparent you would only be able to see the pictures this is really good for me for like making thumbnails if i just want to blend your object in one of my thumbnails i can render it like this with the film transparent background and i can just paste it over anything and all you can see is the object with the lighting on it and no background information at all. Super useful feature and I highly recommend using it. Other than that though, uh, I really don't use any of the other settings in here. A lot of these you'll only need for really high quality renders if you're going for a very specific look, but I usually don't have to do that. So I just experiment with these on your own, see what does what, and see when you could use each setting. Lastly, under this menu, the output properties, uh, you can change actually like where your render goes, like right now. And lastly, we got output properties here. This just determines where on your computer the render goes once Blender is done with rendering it. You can see uh, because I was doing still images, I got the file format set as a PNG, but obviously if you were like rendering an animation, you would want to change this to a video. Then you can change the output folder, like where it goes on your PC once the render is done. Then all the stuff for frame rate down here is just meant for animations. Animations are a little bit more difficult to render, so we can talk about those in another video. But yeah, this is the very basics of still rendering. Uh, just mess around with the objects, with the lighting, get some cool looking stuff, maybe get a transparent background in there as 
well. And with just this knowledge, like this is the very, very basics of rendering. There's so much more you could do to make your renders look better, but just this can get you some cool stuff already. So reply in the comments with some sick renders that you guys made, and I guess I will see you all in episode number six in a couple days. See ya!